why should we study God? I put together kind of a list of some things uh, as we believers are going through this really uncertain time and our beliefs are being tested. Uh, I think right now is a wonderful time to start studying God if you're not if you're not already studying who He is. And by study, I mean intentional. Um, going deeper than just a brief reading of the Bible uh, scripture, which is wonderful. I love to just eat the word, but an actual sitting and studying and thinking about God, wondering about him as you go through your day. Um, for one, studying God, it just it can correct any wrong ideas we may have in our head. We may be, when we think about God and we wonder about God or we, we look at a situation and, and wonder where God was in it, a lot of times we can have incorrect thoughts about God or incorrect assumptions, incorrect ways that we think he works. Um, and so when you study about God, you can correct any uh, wrong assumptions or wrong beliefs that you may have because our beliefs need to um, line up with what the Bible says, uh, who God is and what he says about himself. Another practical thing is that we study God because it, he can help us make decisions. Knowing the character of who God is helps us to know how to act in certain situations, how to react in certain situations. If maybe there's a difficult person you're interacting with, knowing who God is and that we are supposed to reflect who he is to everyone around us will help determine our actions and our responses. Uh, why study God? It'll help us grow in our belief. Uh, in, in our faith. Faith is a gift from God, but we can continue to grow it with information, with knowledge of who he is. And when we feed our faith and our belief with the knowledge, it results in trust. We trust who holds us. We trust who is in charge of our lives. And we know that he is worthy to receive all of our trust, all of our reliance. And so studying really bolsters our faith and puts, um, puts meat on our bones for belief and trust. Um, and finally, I mean, we just, why trust God? Uh, or why study God? Because we're commanded to. Uh, there's, there are so many verses, but 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2.15. So we're, we're told to study God, and it results in all these wonderful things uh, that you uh, are able to discern correctly in situations what is true, what is not, because you, you have studied and fed yourself. Um, and so one of the things that I, I don't feel qualified to teach a lot of things or a lot of things on God, and, and I certainly um, don't feel qualified uh, to be anyone special sitting here, but what I do know is that when I studied the attributes of God, my life was changed. My faith was in, in, uh, infinitely strengthened and encouraged, and I want yours to be too. Um, and so the attributes are what I'm gonna focus on in this series. And the very first attribute, and when I say attributes, I mean the characteristics of God. Um, we we ascribe words to him and he uses words about himself in the Bible to, to teach us about who he is. And our definitions need to match his definitions. And so these attributes and the way he describes himself is really just describing his character. It's not, um, he's not trying to be these attributes. He, he already is, and so we learn what love is because he says God is love in the Bible. God is love, and so when we study that attribute later, um, we will find out what love is because we're looking at God. And so I think that's really neat. He doesn't have to, be, have to try to be his attributes. He just is, and so when we study the names of God, we're learning about who he says he is. But the main foundation, when we tackle some of these attributes, I won't be able to do all of them, but when we tackle these attributes, um, that we remember that God is one. He tells us over and over in the Bible that he is unified, he is one God, three persons, but one God. All three persons have the same attributes. And that same God 
the Holy Spirit is who dwells inside of you as a believer when you've said yes to Jesus and his payment on the cross for your sins. And so you have the fullness of God, all of his attributes, accessible, living in your re renewed spirit, your, your spirit that is alive in you, that is of God, the Holy Spirit. Um, so God, his, one of his attributes you, is that he is unified. And when we say he's unified, it means he cannot be divided into parts. He is a being, he is one being. You can't divide him up into the different descriptions of who he is, such as when we read the Bible and we see that it says God is light. And then we read in a whole nother chapter, God is love. So we need to assess, wait, did he stop being light so he could be love? No, of course not. He is light and he is love simultaneously at the same time. He does not stop being one attribute so he can go resume being another. We are describing who he is at all times. And so sometimes we see attributes of God um, more clearly than others. Um, they're easier to see than others. Um, like in, in the beginning, the create the create God is creator. So the creativity of God and the art the artistry of God is really easy to see because he is showing us in the creation story who he is. And so we see really clearly, oh, he's creator, he is painter, he is artist, and he's genius, you know, of putting everything together. And so in some instances it's easier to see an attribute than in than when he tells us a different um way to understand him but we we need to remember that he is one he's not divided up and he doesn't stop being one attribute so he can be another um, he's not just a collection of his attributes and I think this is important um, because a certain attribute way to describe God it is always true at all times when God says he is good he is good all the time in every situation. And so our definition of good needs to line up with who he says he is. Um, for instance, if you're going through a really hard time financially and you know that God can give you a job or bring someone into your life that can bring you a job and, and it's not happening at the moment, it can be really easy to question the goodness of God if he's not acting in a certain way that you think being good should act of like, oh, I have all this money in the bank. God is good. So taking the time to understand you see your situation and you reassess, oh, God is good all the time. How does this apply to my situation? And watching how he takes care of you um, because he will never does he will never stop being himself. There's a verse in the Bible that says God will never deny himself. It means mean he will not stop being God. He won't stop being love. He won't stop being light or good or wrath or holy. These things do not end. He will never not be himself. And this is comforting. This is really comforting. For me, I went through cancer in um, 2016. It was an aggressive cancer that came out of the blue. And let me tell you, when your health or when your life is attacked in a way um, that you had not expected, when your journey in front of you does not line up with what you had wanted for your life. I did not want to go through cancer. I didn't want, I mean, I didn't want to go through the treatment and all that. Um, it's really easy to start believing lies about God when your circumstances around you are screaming at you that God is a liar. That, oh, he's, he's not good. Why would you think he's good? You have cancer. We need to realign ourselves. So whenever situations are bumpy and rocky and changed that we know God does not lie and he never changes, he is always himself, that we can align our thoughts with who he says he is. And I believe that this attribute of unity of God 
completely anchored me during that storm of, you know what? God is good. God loves me. He, he has not stopped loving me because I have cancer. Um, and for those of you who don't know me, obviously, uh, my cancer is gone and I'm healed. Thank you, Lord. I, I'm, I, I thank him for that decision. But through it, I had just learned about these attributes going before cancer came. And I hung on to the fact that just because a circumstance was really rough and really hard, God did not change who he is. And I could hang on to, even though it was hard to see at that point God's goodness, all I could, all I could see was his sovereignty, his control <laughs> um, of where his decision for my life to allow cancer into it. But you know what? He did not stop being good. He did not stop loving me and showing me his love during hard times like that. And oh, I want to tell you that the more you know, the more you learn about God, the greater your trust will grow and the stronger your belief. So I just wanted to start this series to really reinforce that who God is matters and studying who he is will uplift your faith and strengthen you and encourage you. And we can start with the fact that God is one. He will never stop being himself and he loves you and all of his attributes are there for every need that you have. He has all of his attributes all at once, all the time. We can cling to him in whatever circumstance we are in knowing that who he is, is what we need.